Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. This is the beginning of Holy Week and a wonderful day in the life of the Church. And today is actually the combination of two days from the old calendar. In the old calendar, we had uh, Passion Sunday, which was the week before Palm Sunday. And then we had Palm Sunday, which led into Holy Week. But they've combined the two days as an opportunity for us to not only remember Jesus' triumphal entry, but then, before we even begin Holy Week, to be gripped by his passion, to be gripped by uh, the, the work that he did, his salvation work for us as he uh, was scourged, as he went through the tortures, and as he was crucified on the cross. And we, we get all of that on Passion Sunday, which is now combined with Palm Sunday, to remember the fact that, uh, that this has happened. Now, the gospel today is really long. It is the entire Passion. It's done usually uh, as a narrative in dramatic form. So multiple voices are, are participating along with the people, the congregation being the crowd. And so I'm not going to take the long amount of time it would be for the passion of the Lord, uh, but I'm going to use the palm gospel, the palm processional gospel uh, that we get from Luke, because today, of course, is uh, a part of cycle C, Luke's gospel. And so it'll be his version of the triumphal entry. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. O Lord. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. As he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at a, the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, Go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? You will answer, The master has need of it. So those who had been sent went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying this colt? They answered, The master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road, and now as he approached the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the, the stones will cry out. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in our gospel, we have Jesus approaching Jerusalem for his final Passover, the time of his passion, his death, and ultimately his resurrection. And he has already been to Bethany, where he, of course, previously had raised Lazarus from the dead. And he was back and had dinner with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And this was at the time where there was the anointing of his feet. And now he was being prepared for his triumphal entry, his journey into Jerusalem. And, of course, they were welcoming him as the Messiah, the conqueror. The image of Jesus coming into the city on a colt, which is the colt of a donkey, the, a, a young donkey, uh, is the same image of Judas Maccabeus coming into Jerusalem after his triumphal victory. And, of course, riding on a donkey is more a sign of peace, where if he was riding on the horse, it would be a general uh, either on his way to war or on his way back from war. But a, a donkey is a sign that he is coming in peace. But there's something else that's kind of intriguing about this when you think of it. 
he, he specified that it would be a colt that had never been ridden before. And no one has ever sat on this colt. In other words, this is going to be the one main uh, reason for this colt is to be my uh, source of transportation into the city today. The other thing that's interesting about that, if if no colt is, uh, you know, a donkey has ever had anybody sitting on it, this is going to be something strange. And yet the, the colt never bolted, never bucked, never did anything, but quietly succumbed to the, the presence of Jesus. Again, another sign of his influence over not only all of creation, but now the creatures. So it's, it's kind of interesting to think about that. As he rode along, uh, cloaks and palm branches were being placed on the ground, and he is um, entering into people shouting out, uh, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. They were welcoming him as the Messiah. And so this was a time of, of great joy and celebration. And they thought he was going to come to take care of the Romans, to bring uh, salvation and, and uh, recovery uh, from Roman occupation. There were all these things that were in their minds as they welcomed him. They really at that time were not even thinking about their own sin, which was the reason, the real reason he was coming. They only thought about the fact that he would be coming to bring about a victory and the presence of the king that was sent by God, the king of kings who would again take over the rule of his people. And so those crowds, the Pharisees wanted him to rebuke them for doing that. And he said, you know, if they keep silent, even the stones will cry out. How powerful is that? All creation was poised for this very moment. He was entering into Jerusalem to finish a work that had been prophesied since the beginning of the world, the salvation of all mankind through the cross, a work that would reach back through the centuries and reach forward through the centuries, being the one perfect act of sacrifice that would be the salvation of all mankind. How powerful it is to think about the fact that it all was about to happen. This was the start button for his passion, his death, and his resurrection. And so he's coming into the city, and they're rejoicing at his coming. And how powerful it is for us on this day to remember not just his Palm Sunday procession in, seated on a donkey that would lead him to the place where he would bring, bring peace between God and man, that, that uh, the place that sin played in standing between mankind and God would be dealt with forever in such a powerful way is about to take place. During the Mass, however, will shift from praise to passion. And it's interesting that the same people today that we heard saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, some of those same voices may in just a few days be the ones that cry out, crucify him. This is a powerful week. The most glorious and most um, poignant week in the life of the church. May we not take lightly what we are entering into. And may I just say, please participate this week. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, Easter Sunday. These are not individually segmented uh, celebrations, but is an entire uh, seamless garment of praise for God. I want to encourage you. Take advantage of being at every one of these masses. Use this time, set it apart for God, that you might truly be with Jesus through his passion and his death and thus be able to celebrate his resurrection. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. 
O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, we are beginning Holy Week, and uh, the first three days are filled with different things going on around the city as we get ready for Holy Thursday in the Upper Room, Good Friday with His scourging and His crucifixion, with the Easter Vigil where we rehearse all of salvation history, and that's the first celebration of Easter is at the Easter Vigil. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.